Hello everybody, welcome to a day of Cosmeteer. Today we're going to go and look at one of these ships that I've been playing, which is my laser ship, one of my mini laser ships, and it's designed this way in a very specific way, uh, so the walkway is going in and out. Now normally when you're battling your ships or testing your ships out, you test them against the uh, game-made ships, because game-made ships are designed where they're not meant to constant combat, it's just one time, get in the battle, and then done. So here I like to pit my ships against each other so I can optimize them because my ships are already better than most of, if not all of, the CPO game ships based on the same cost. So right here you look at this and you can see how they come in from one section and they immediately go out, grab the energy and go right out. Now it's designed this way in a very open way because if they were to say for example they were to destroy one of these sections, they can immediately go on the back and come in from the back or go from the front. Now if you look really close, you see how they come in and immediately get out and are running straight toward a walkway. So they get in and the back's designed the same way and the front's designed the same way. So we're utilizing all the power and we're also utilizing our teams and our groups for the exact amount of energy distributors for my shields. You can see right here, they've already destroyed the front and he's probably going to go ahead and he's probably going to wipe this part out right here. Now normally this particular ship does win against this other ship, but I did improve this other ship here as well for its design. So here, let me pit it against one more time just so that you can see it. And so I have it so it's designed so it literally is, they come in, you can see them all running in, and then they come out and they run and they go and they go and they distribute out the power to where it needs to be got, given to. So it's immediately going that way. Now when you look at the back of the ship too, the boosters are made it so that it can strafe. So if you've seen some of my gameplay, you'll notice that this ship can easily go and flank behind other ships and outmaneuver them just because of how the boosters is. And the cost-wise, it's made mainly for lasers because my main ships that are cannon ships require ammo, right? They require sulfur. Where this ship right here doesn't require anything and it's more my cargo ship allowing me to go in and redistribute and resupply my main ships, my cannon ships. Uh, I can already clearly see that I've designed the ship so much better that it's just wiping that other one out. You can look at this ship and how this one's designed. Is this one distributes its power as well, but it has a huge amount of advantage in the front because it has so much armor in the front. And then normally you have to try to take out the two sides with lots of shields and armor on the side. So let's come over here and let's now take a look at why I have those burst out like this. So I have my main drone-like one. So if I were to take this ship right here, and I were to come over here and take this normal ship for like a player ship, the difference between these two ships are significant. This ship right here has no cargo. This is kind of like how a game played ship is. It's just straight for battle, and it doesn't have a lot of boosters in the back, so it doesn't have a lot of thrust. So it doesn't get around the map very quickly. Where this ship does have cargo, can get around the map very quickly because it has more booster and more thrust, so for gameplay it's faster. But you'll notice is this ship that costs a lot less and has less crew will almost always win against this ship, even though they are designed very, very similar. Well, you can see that they, they kill each other in that sense, but normally the other ship, which costs a lot less, will win in that particular case. So if we come over here and take out these two ships, and then I have them designed so they increment up, because building costs in gameplay, you have to obviously have enough materials in all different sense. So this ship right here is my two cannon, and this ship right here is my four cannon ship. And they upgrade and they upgrade in crew as well, so they increment in that particular sense. Now my four crew cannon ship has lasers as well as other things and it supplies itself very well. It's designed in a way to completely annihilate most other ships. And if I were to come over here, the real test and real battle is if you can take one of your normal ships and you fight it against a Ballisteria. If you can do a one versus one Ballisteria for uh, under 500,000 and beat a Ballisteria, that's how you know your ship is probably pretty good. So if you come over here to battleships, you come over here to combat in the monolith, and we'll look for a Ballisteria. In this case, this one, Ballisteria. It's only 394,000, so 400,000. But most ships at the same cost is not going to beat that one because a Blisteria is crazy. It's probably one of the hardest ships that I encounter. So even if I were to take my laser ships, which is 576,000, right? 96 crew. And I fight against it, it doesn't even stand a chance. The Blisteria is going to just rip through it like no tomorrow. 
It's one of the few ships, the Ballista area is one of the few ships without nukes. Now, if you're fighting against a nuke ship, obviously, nuke ships, nuke, nuke ships will demolish other ships very quickly. But I'm, I don't like to play with nukes in that sense because it's, yeah, I can build nuke ships and, and I have designs for them, but I don't enjoy playing with new ships because it just takes out the fun of ship to ship battles for me. But you can see right here, this ballista area just just cleans up other ships. Like a lot of my other ships just don't stand against the chance against. But the main reason why I have these other ships, and if I come over here and if I ever take my just my two cannon ship and my two cannon ship, which is five hundred forty four thousand seventy six crew, but my two cannon ship does stand a chance against a ballista area. In fact, almost 100% of the time, my two cannon ship will demolish out and take out the list area without any problems because of how it's designed. And you can see they, they, they distribute all the power. It's very important to make walkways and how they're designed. Like even before I had a walkway right here that went in. And if you had it right there, that's just a tiny second delay of getting them back out and going again. So designing it to be perfect so that they come in and out and distribute everything and making sure that they're aligned and grouped up together is an important key factor. And you can see right here, just we wiped out that ballisteria. But I wanna I wanna show the fact of a ballisteria. And I know I showcased this other this other one showing diagonal ships, my laser four. Even this ship doesn't stand a chance against a ballist area like the ballist area is is one of the more nastiest ships that someone built but this ship's not designed to play gameplay it's slow it's literally a one after one combat it's it's done but one versus one ship versus the ballist area your chances of winning if you don't design your ship well enough are very low Unless you have a much more powerful ship, or you have a faster ship, or you use real guns or other things like that. But you can see one versus one versus these type of combat ships, the Ballisteria is very powerful. But And that's why I will also show you casing my cannon ships, where I have my four cannon ships, but then my six cannon ship. My six cannon ship, which is only 819,000 with 616 crew. You can watch this, and you'll see this, this ship is the one that I've been playing a lot. Now, I designed this one. I spent a lot of time designing it, and there's tiny little features, just like this little edge that hooks out here to block just a tiny bit more damage for your larger shields. Even the tiny little minute little things and details, see how it blocks just a tiny bit extra damage hits and gives the shield just a little bit more time to regenerate and recuperate, adds a whole nother layer to the way your ships are designed. But my six cannon ship, as you can see, it barely sustains any damage and just, just mops the floor up with it has great maneuverability you can fly around you've, you've seen my if you've watched any of my other videos you'll see the gameplay of how these ships actually uh, perform in player versus uh, non-player character ships so you can see that the, it's, it's designed this way in this particular way now let's come over here and let's let's do let's do something even bigger right let's come over here and I want to show you these mini ships so if you come over here you remember how I was showcasing these little drones? If you were to take the same number of these drones, and this is where swarming comes into play, and if I were to take, for example, my, uh, just one of these ships, right? So almost the same cost value. These three little ships will and should be able to take out this. Well, actually, I don't think so because my cannon ships were designed to wipe these guys out. So my two cannon ship, I actually think is going to win in almost all cases. But normally these three little drone ships, if you've pitted them against any non-player character ships, or even some of my earlier designs, these ones, these little tiny ships that are just, uh, just designed for combat, they're not fast, so they won't be able to get around the map very quickly. You can normally wipe out a lot of these other ships, because you can see when you're shooting from all these different angles, or you can flank behind, they can take out these little tiny ships very, very quickly. It's just all, it all depends. And if you take a closer look at how these ships are designed, when I look at them, they have the railways, the very minimalistic, sh smallest amount of crew, go in, go out, do damage. I still believe actually my little ships may win. It's even odds. 
same amount of point value, almost same amount of crew, and you can see right here the damage done is just is just significant. But when you're doing only two cannons, that's one thing. But if you come over here, and if you upgrade to four cannons, and then take four of these little ships, right? And these four little ships versus four cannons. You know, this is the four cannon ship all of a sudden just does a whole different scenario. Where as long as it can mitigate the damage and disperse it out correctly, it should stand a decent chance against these little tiny ships. You can see right here, I'll get a closer up, look at this one. The amount of people, power, you're almost always is using full power. Almost always fully, always fully attacking. Guns are always firing. Has good defense in the front. They're always trying to take out the shields in the beginning. This guy got stuck up on this other one. So these four little drones can easily take out that four cannon ship. But now let's come over here and go to six cannons. Right? I don't know if I can actually deal with five of these little guys with six cannons. But we're trying to pit against the hardest because these little tiny drone ships uh, in a 1v1 and the same power point win 100% of the time. They can sell the ones. But see, when you come over here, you had six cannons. Just took out two ships, no problem. Come over here. I'm fighting against this other one. We should be able to take out this other ship as well. You can see where it's, it's heavily armored against the cannons. It still takes a long time to break through. And they got shields for each one. So now we're just down to two ships. And as long as it doesn't get strafed in, which it actually might, depends on the positioning. Usually if I'm flying the ship, I would position it and put the armored side up so they wouldn't just gun through here. I took it that one. And then the six cannon ship. Should be able to take out this last guy. But these little drones are very, very nasty and do a ton, a ton of damage. And you can see right here, these are the ships. And this is how they're designed. Use lots and lots of walkways, lots and lots of mining tiny changes, and the way the boosters are positioned are also important too, because you need to be able to strafe, you need to be able to flank, and you need to be able to move around. Now, my first design of these ships, I only had uh, one of those boosters in the front over on these sides, these, these heavy boosters, which didn't allow for movability in some of my first earlier gameplays. So, for example, if you come over here and take out those, right, and we come down to. 6.4 right and we look at the earlier design of 6.4 let's pause the game here for a second you can see right here i only have one booster but a shield give myself extra defense but it reduced my maneuverability and because it reduced my maneuverability this was a bad move extra shield yes live longer but if you can't position yourself around or behind enemy totally totally bad now this also as well this booster i moved it one tile up so that it doesn't, when you're shooting in this way, you don't actually get hit toward the shield. So if you come over here, you see the booster's here in this this block right here. But I moved the booster up, one tile up, and then I added this extra layer. Now, I didn't want to add a little point here because that stops the ability for my lasers and my disruptors to actually shoot out. So you need to add that little tiny extra allows it for them still to shoot at all the angles but not block their line of fire while also producing my movement and my maneuverability behind heavy defense so that this part of the section of the ship is always normally the last part to get destroyed as long as you're head on and not being shot at diagonally and then you have your main shields and then your backup shields behind that to protect it and then I also changed the way the armor is shaped for giving it a little bit more curve so I don't get caught in edges so before I had them all pointy and if you come over here to this ship, you can see, you see how they're pointy, jagged edges. Yeah, maybe look cooler, but you end up getting stuck on other ships or stuck on other places. So you got to keep that in mind that these pointy edges are, are, they look cool. But when you're trying to fly around ship to ship, they get stuck. So all I did was I just reversed them in a sense to make them smooth edges so you don't get stuck. Well, still adding the same amount of protection, but just smooth edges. So it's just something to think about when you're building your ships. And then obviously your walkways, making sure that it's, if you look at them, I know it looks like a, a crazy mess, but you look at this one right here, it comes down, 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 and down. They get all the way down here. And then they go up, and then up, up, 
right up and then they go up and then they go around and they can go this way so it's designed in a way so that they stagger and they can redistribute very very quickly that's the way these ships are designed now I, the main purpose of this video was to actually showcase my laser ship these little ones that I built new because these ones are and, and I remember showing this one as well so I redesigned this ship as well very differently to add disruptors in the front here because just adding two more disruptors to this laser ship gives it a good fighting chance against this ship normally this little crab ship although it's cool the problem with this ship that I had when I was playing actual gameplay is the extended defense for the boosters on the back side here they didn't I don't have enough um, made it hard to fly around other ships and it wasn't maneuverability very much and I either added something to that ship and messed it up because now it's losing all the time let me come here and look at this again no those are the wrong two ships here I want a laser ship must have made a change here to mess it up. I'm just wondering what I changed to mess it up. Because before, this ship used to stand a really good chance after I made the modification, adding these disruptors here to take on this crab like ship. But then again, you know, it's the AI fighting against each other, so maybe it's maybe it's the way that it's changes I made. But you can see right here, remember how I was saying the stack layer? So even if they fight in and they take out this section, then I have my armor back here. And they can still have the ability to redistribute back to the other guns as needed. So now they've taken a different path and going behind. So even though they took out that, they can still keep going. Which now I gotta figure out what I did to this ship to make it not as effective. But obviously I changed something. All I did was I moved the fire up here. Maybe because of groups. Didn't make any changes to the friendly users. change to it to make it so it's not as effective. Usually this one used to start winning a lot against that crab one. You can see right here, you notice how they're, even though they're taking out sections, they still have the ability, even though the cargo is, there's extra doors to get, so they can still get behind. I know they can take the longer path, but that's still longer. But you also have the ability to come back here to redistribute against by port defenses. Because these ships are meant for defense defense for other ships. So they take on missiles and nukes that are trying to flank my other ships. And more defense. There you go. That, that's very. Um, I'll have to mess with this some more and figure out what what slight change I made to make it not win all the time because it used to always win against this one, but now it's. But I've been improving all my ships, so that's what you have to do if you're looking to design ships very very distinct and unique. Is you'll come in. And you pit your ships against together once they can start bleeding the more uh, built-in ships. Like if you were to fight against, say for example, these... In, it, the Imperium is more like the boss level type of ships. So if you would come over here and you would pit against like one of these laser ships. This ship right here is actually a neat ship that is really designed. It's got a crazy amount of speed and a crazy amount of shields. Now this ship right here doesn't even stand a chance against it the way that it's designed, because it's an Imperium ship, right? These ships is just, they're designed just pure common. But you notice its weakness behind this ship is the back. All I could do is, if I was controlling it, I would just come over here and flank behind him, and just hit him behind, because this later ship has far more maneuverability than this other ship. But front-to-front -front battles with this laser ship, because this laser ship is meant for flanking, not just flanking, maneuverability, as well as not having to acquire any resources. And they're more of a miner, because they have the mining lasers in the high. So you watch my gameplay, they salvage other ships. So this ship is just meant for a cheap cost, lots of crew to resupply my other ships, and the ability to flank and get behind them for maneuverability. So they have that, they have the great, and then they have a lot of smooth corners, so they don't catch on other ships. 
see that that ship right there. But if you go point to point value and I come over here and I take my ship and I take my six cannon ship, my main battleship, right? Which maybe costs just a tiny bit more. But this ship right here, this is kind of can she even take on a million, million, two hundred thousand easy? Because this ship is just is my main battleship. I've spent the most amount of time on my main battleship, this one right here, with six cannons to just wipe out other ships. It's got crazy amount of speed, it has ability to flank, it has ability to move around. Uh, I got rid of that catching ability on the sides because those corners will easily catch on other ships which made it annoying when you're trying to move around. But you can see this ship sustained very minimum amount of damage and just wiped out other ones. Now I lost a lot of frontal armor but that's, that's a very minor loss, very cheap cost compared to the other ship which just just got annihilated and I didn't lose any of my main guns or anything and that's how you build and design better and cooler ships thank you for watching you enjoying this content go ahead and leave me a comment tell me what you like tell me what you don't like tell me how I can improve uh, if you like come back at least once a week watch what videos I have posted and thank you for being here and you will have a wonderful rest of your day